p-value. The p-value you can relate to your alpha here as a comparison. Very similar to, you know how we compare the uh, critical value and test statistics. See if the test statistic is, is down here in this tail or up here in the far right tail, you reject the null hypothesis. Here's the thing that creates the tails, your critical values. Well, your p-value is actually the probability of making that type 1 error, of rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it's true. You shouldn't have rejected it. So this is your probability of making the wrong decision, rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact uh, you shouldn't have rejected the null hypothesis. And your alpha level is the highest probability you're willing to accept of making that wrong decision. Well, if your p-value, your probability of making the wrong decision, is less than the probability that you're willing to accept of making the wrong decision, then you reject the null hypothesis. So if you don't understand all this, it just comes down to this. If your p-value is less than your alpha, you reject. In fact, if your p-value is even less than or equal to your alpha, you uh, reject the null hypothesis. Now, I've never seen a case where the p-value actually hit the alpha. When you think about it, what's the chance of this number hitting right on 0.1 or right on 0.05? But it's actually you would reject it at that value or lower. So if your p-value is less than or equal to your alpha level, you reject the null hypothesis. And in this case, you see the p-value here, 0.01, is less than your alpha level, so you would reject it. Now, what's the most significant alpha level for this problem with this data that I have in there? Well, we rejected a 0 .0 at the 0.1 alpha level. So could we reject it at 0.05? Yeah, we can because this p-value is less than 0.05. Let me go ahead and point, put 0.05 in there, and you see that the result doesn't change. All it did is shrunk my rejection region some. See, here's my rejection region right now, and at 0.1, here's my rejection region. So I'm getting a smaller and smaller rejection region because I'm using a smaller and smaller alpha level, and I'm still getting a rejected null hypothesis. Now my next alpha level is smaller than this, so I still got a, I got a rejected null hypothesis at 0.1 and 0.05. So far, what's the most significant alpha level? 0.05. Okay, it's the smallest alpha level that you standard alpha level that you can reject the null hypothesis. Now if I check 0.01, I know right now it's not going to reject because my p-value is greater than 0.01. But I'll go ahead and do it, and it doesn't hurt to try it. 0.01. So watch what happens that red in that picture it's clear down here. So the test statistic does not fall in the rejection region and I cannot reject the null hypothesis at the 0.01 alpha level. If I can't reject it at 0.01, then that's not my most significant alpha level. My most significant alpha level, again, is the smallest, let's see, let go up here again, the smallest alpha level that you can reject the null hypothesis. The lowest standard alpha level that you can reject the null hypothesis. So at the 0.01, that's not the most significant alpha level because I can't reject the null hypothesis. And it, but at the 0.05 alpha level, I can reject the null hypothesis. So my most significant alpha level is the 0.05 alpha level for this problem. And that's how you would probably summarize it in a, a, a real life problem. You would say at the 0.05 alpha level, I was able to show that the average sodium content is significantly less than 230 with this data that I have in there, okay? So that's the most significant alpha level, and again, you can compare things by just comparing the p-value to your alpha level. If your p-value is less than your alpha level, you reject, it's as easy as that. Now, you may say Excel gives you all the answers, so why memorize this? Well, the reason is, is because uh, sometimes you're just given an alpha level and a p-value and told to make a decision. So let's go ahead and do some of these right here. See, back on that sodium content problem when we did it, let's look at that one second. Uh, that first example when we did it, look, here's the p-value, 0 0.077. Well, 0 0.07 is less than 0.1. So since this is less than this, we reject it. So we're able to reject it, the null hypothesis, at the 0.1 alpha level. But at the 0.05 alpha level, we don't reject it. Why? This p-value is not less than your alpha level. So what's the most significant alpha level on this problem? Well, we didn't reject it at 0.05, and if we don't reject it at 0.05, we're not going to reject it any lower than that, so there's no need to check something like 0.01 or something like that. No need to do that. See, it just gets you a smaller and smaller rejection area as you go. So this most significant alpha level is the smallest alpha level that you could reject the null hypothesis. And we weren't able to reject it at 0.05, but we were able to reject it at 0.1. So this most significant alpha level would be 
And if it says summarize at the most significant alpha level, it would say at the 0.1 alpha level, I was able to show that the average sodium content was significantly greater than 230. Okay, this is different data in here than what's over here. Okay, so uh, knows the difference. That's why we're able to show something here is greater and over here we're able to show that it's significantly less. But look, if this is real close to this or if the standard deviation would have been higher, let's say the standard deviation would have been 20. Now it's do not reject the null hypothesis. And I don't go any higher than this. So what's the most significant alpha level? There is no most significant alpha level because that p-value is greater than 0.1 and we never raise the alpha level higher than 0.1. So if this p-value is greater than 0.1, you're done. It's uh, no need to check anything further. Uh, the, the, you do not reject the null hypothesis. You would just say at any alpha level, I was unable, and any alpha level means any alpha level up to 0.1. So at any alpha level, I was unable to show that the average sodium content was significantly greater than 230. That's just because I raised up the standard deviation. And what's going on here is you would see that your test statistic is uh, farther to the left. See, it's clear over there to 0.72. Let me just graph the right-hand side of this curve here. And there's your test statistic for this problem. So you, if you can't reject a 0.1, you just cannot reject. And just comparing these with p-values, see, if your p-value is 0.026, let's just get to it. What's your most significant alpha level? Well, 0.0246 is less than the 0.1 alpha level. It's less than the 0.05 alpha level, but it's not less than 0.01. So your most significant alpha level is 0.05, okay? How about 0.246? Well, after you do a few of these, you'll realize if this number here is greater than 0.1, you don't reject it at any alpha level. What's the most significant alpha level? None of them. There is no standard alpha level that you can reject the null hypothesis. So at any alpha level, you would be unable to show the alternate because you cannot reject the null on this problem at any alpha level. How about this one? If your p-value is 0 0.0002, what would be your decision? Well, 0002 is less than 1, less than 0.1, less than 0.05, less than 0.01. 0 0.0002 is even less than 0 0.001, but it's not less than 0 0.0001. So the smallest standard alpha level, and this is all your alpha levels here, the smallest standard alpha level that 0 0.0002 is less than is 0 0.001. Okay, so that is your uh, most significant alpha level, 0 0.001. What about if it was this, 0 0.40s and a 7? Well, if your p-value is 0 0.40s and a 7, that's less than all these alpha levels here. So the most uh, significant alpha level is 0 0.0001, and we never need to check any smaller than that. In fact, a lot of people would say that's ridiculously small to check. But it just gives you an idea of how we're doing this problem. So we'd say uh, at the 0 0.000, what, three zeros and a 1 alpha level, we were able to show whatever the alternate is because we would be able to reject the null hypothesis on this problem. And one more thing, test statistics. We talked about this already. If your test statistic falls in your rejection region, you reject. So let's just do some of these. See, sometimes they just give you a problem. They say the test statistic is this and your critical value is this. What do you do, reject or not reject? Well, if your test statistic is 1.72 and your critical value is 1.96, well, here's the picture for that. Here's 1.96, your critical value determines your rejection region. Here's your test statistic. It didn't fall in there. You do not reject the null hypothesis. Now, if your uh, critical value is 1.64, then you do reject the null hypothesis. It hits right in here. You would reject the null hypothesis because your test statistic right here is bigger than 1.64. Okay. Uh, left tail, same thing, but we're looking on the left-hand side. Negative uh, 1.72 is not farther to the left than negative 1.96. But negative 1.72 is far to the left than negative 1.64. So at the 1.64, you know, at the, with if this was your critical value and this was your test statistic, you would reject it. If this is your test statistic and this is your critical value, you would not reject it. So here's the picture at the at uh, one point negative 1.96, and here it is at negative 1.64. Now two-tailed test. If the test statistic is negative 1.72. Uh, we would reject it on the left-hand uh, side at the negative 1.64 uh, uh, critical value, uh, but we wouldn't reject it at uh, plus or minus 1.96. That's showing on the left-hand side. And if we did reject a two-tailed test on the left-hand side, we'd say it's significantly less. And then if we were running a two-tailed test, and uh, let's say your test statistic was 1.72, well, at this alpha level, I think this would be like about a, a 
0.1 alpha level right there. I forget what, let's check that. What gives you 1.64? 1 1.64 uh, 1 is if we have, uh, I think a 0.1 alpha level. Yeah, 0.1 gives you the 1.64 and a 0.05 gives you on a large uh, sample test gives you the 1.96 so at the uh, point 0.1 we would reject it see point 0.1 alpha level on a two-tailed test gives you 1.64 for a z-score plus and minus 1.64 and if your test statistic was 1.72 you would reject it now if you use the 0.05 alpha level you would have uh, rejection regions at plus and minus 1.96, and your test statistic does not fall into that region, so you wouldn't reject it. But here where you would reject it, right here, that would be your most significant alpha level, and you would summarize it by saying it's significantly greater because you rejected it on the right-hand side.